<laughs> if you look very familiar to people who are watching this right now, why why do you look so familiar? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I was on a uh, little bit of a, a reality TV show called The Bachelor. Small, just a small show. It's I a think startup a few, show. few have watched it. Um, <laughs> yep. Few love it. Very few. Um, <laughs> Welcome to the Real Vibe Podcast. Uh, this is Aaron, and this is Jacoby Ray. I just hey, introduced man. myself in third person because that's how this is. This is Aaron. Go. This is Jacoby. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple of boys from the Midwest in New York City at ASL Studios, New York City's newest mm -hmm. high end uh, video, photo, and podcast space. What do you this think place, of the space this when place we walked through? It's amazing, dude. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness, this is not Indiana. This is one hundred percent. This not is a definitely not Oklahoma either. No, this is really this is fancy. No. I'm afraid to touch anything. That but I also want to touch everything. <laughs> that's true. We wanted to give a big shout out to ASL Studios for setting this up Thank you. and uh, Thank running you. it. The guys behind the cameras are awesome. We appreciate you guys. Zach Shawcross is on the show today. Let's Zach, mm -hmm. let's give Zach a hand. Hey, Zach's okay. On the show today. All right, guys, take it easy. <laughs> take it easy. We've been hanging out with Zach uh, behind the scenes a little bit. You may see some content from that later down the road. Mm -hmm. If you look very familiar to people who are watching this right now, why why do you look so familiar? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I was on a uh, little bit of a, a reality TV show called The Bachelor. Small, just a small show. It's I a think startup a few, show. few have watched it. Um, yep. Few love it. Very few. Um, I but, was rooting for you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette over the past, uh, I guess, a year and a half, two years. Wow. And now it is all done. It's all wrapped. It's all wrapped. I'm happy, engaged, and out of that world. Pretty That's much. Right. Pretty How much. long did that go on? How long was that? Uh, I mean, from the end of 2021 till about March of this year. Wow. Nonstop. You know, filming, yeah, yeah. yeah but just being in that world. That's a lot of time. Constant, a lot of time constant. to put in there. Congratulations, yeah. man. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And congrats on the engagement. And it's awesome. Very happy. Very yeah. happy. Yeah. What's it like to have to just be on all the time? If you know what I mean by uh, on. Yeah. 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 Um, well, it was a completely new feeling for me because the way I stumbled into it was a fluke. It was a friend that had nominated me because he had been on the show for like a week or so. He's like, oh, I just made a bunch of great, you know, buddies, you know, give it a shot. And I was working at a tech job in Austin, you know, sales. Texas, all right. In Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, like I lived guy. in Texas five years. I love Texas. Texas is the best. We're not leaving. And uh, just doing normal sales job stuff. And then I change my world with this and you realize okay there's a whole other world in reality space and dating someone on camera and that's wild and then all the appearances you have to do like it is non-stop it's exhausting because you so you don't Very you don't come from show business you're not you're not in the entertainment world before this no ne never never my uncle uh is has been and, and is. He's Patrick Warburton. I look up to him. He's a very successful actor, voice actor. Oh, I know he's yeah, big, yeah. big, big Disney guy. The big, uh, yeah. The, everybody knows his voice. Everyone knows his voice. So I looked up to that my entire life, but I never took any steps towards, I guess, entertainment like that. I feel like you could do voice acting. You've got you've got the low register for it. Well, I that's my dream, and I've had one audition. Really? I one. had one audition. It was so random. Like I've I've been kind of vocal about like my passion would be to do what my uncle does be in like a new commercial or do a new cartoon or just do voiceover right and um a company had reached out to me I, I won't say who but they're pretty big in the cartoon space and they gave me an open role audition and i was ecstatic i was like so someone was listening it's gonna happen <laughs> and i drove up to dallas i was like i'm not gonna ask my uncle for help i'm gonna do it on my own i got this i'm calling my fiance like She's talking me off the ledge, like, the you got step. this. We got yeah, it. Like, we're going to make it. We got this. This is it. I feel this it. I feel it. And we go, and I go to the studio, and um, they tell me, don't come prepared. Just come in. You'll meet with the director. He'll work with you. You'll figure it out. Okay. So don't come, like, with any characters, this or that. And so that made me feel good. And I drove up, 
to the audition, right? Get into the beautiful studio. It's like I was kind of fanboying a bit. I was like, I'm actually here. I'm auditioning. I could have a role right. here. And uh, I'm thinking, oh, I could just walk in and be Zach. Like, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's what they want to hear. Be myself and they can make it work. Immediately, they hand me a stack of 100 uh, pages of scripts. And they said, pick seven characters out of this scripts. Have seven character voices that are all different, ready to go in five minutes. Get in the booth. I Woo. damn near shit myself. <laughs> to say, pissed pissed myself. Just a little bit. <laughs> My knees were quivering in the booth. And I, I bombed it. I think I really did bomb it. They... They were nice enough to me during it, but I was so terrified. And that entire drive home from Dallas, I just radio off, just in yeah. my sorrow. Was this the first read that you ever done for any first, first, very first one? Very first read, very first audition. Like wow. I'd never like done any acting, so it was pretty traumatizing. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. but now like experiencing it, I feel like I could prepare myself a little bit more, mm -hmm. and I know what to expect, but. That auditioning stuff, that's scary. Yeah, it is. The Bachelor was a little bit different to get into that space. What is what is yeah. the what does auditioning on The Bachelor look like? It's other not, than be tall, good looking. Good looking, yeah. Is yeah. 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 that the dad. first thing they do is they pick out all the <laughs> handsome dudes and then work their this way down? This half is gonna yeah. leave the room. Yeah. Yeah. Don't stays. even talk, just go. Yeah. No, we don't need to hear you. Yeah. No. No, it's 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 not even like a audition. It's a lot of like screenings and interviews. So, you know. People reach out to them if they're interested in joining the show. And then a lot of the time, people from the show reach out to people on like Instagram or LinkedIn is even a huge thing. Like a good looking dude that appears to be single or a good looking woman that appears to be single, they reach out. And then it's a lot of back and forth, um, like meetings. They just want to get a good feel for you. They want to get an idea of, are you a legit person? Are you telling the truth of who you are? And are you somewhat attractive kind of mm -hmm. thing? And that will go on for months, months and months. But it never feels like, hey, can you say, like, will you accept this rose for me? Like, I 10 times. Right <laughs> no, it's, it's not, never, yeah. never that. It's it's just like, it's pretty It's pretty calm. It's pretty calm. But, now, well, did you have reservations about even doing the show? When they reached out, were you like, oh, I don't know if this is what I want to do? So for The Bachelorette, so I was first a contestant on the show. So that means there was, um, there was at that time, two women that were at, the lead, uh -huh. which was the first time they've ever done that. And I was one of the 30 guys there. And at that point in my career, uh, I had been single for about a year, year and a half. And I was like, you know what? I'm doing really well at work. I kind of want to break. I'm a little burnt out. I'm going to do it. So I, I had some hesitation, but I was like, I want to change it up a little bit. Uh, my company gave me the leave so I could go and do it, pursue it. Then when The Bachelor came around, that's where things hit the fan because, you know, my life had changed at that point. Like, our house had been leaked on the internet and people were, like, driving in our neighborhood, my childhood <laughs> neighborhood, and, like, you, taking photos. Seriously, like, yeah. Oh, there would be paparazzi in, like, New York or sometimes even in Anaheim uh, where my family is. And wow. life was a lot different at that point. So with The Bachelor, yeah, I had to really sit and think about it, talk to my family of, I commit to this it's it's going to be different um best well, decision I could have made you know I met my fiance through it but it still was it was fucking scary I bet did, yeah. did you ever just stop and wonder when the when it's when it's all going to go back to normal or or do you think it ever will you know it's funny you say that because I think it already is is it do for the feel? most part yeah so we went back to normal life really quick because that's what we both really wanted we well, both, that was the end goal, you know, obviously. Right. Like, I think it's safe to say, like, 90, 95% of the people that get into, like, those dating type shows, maybe not 95, maybe 90%. It's not really for just a relationship and then go back to their normal lives. It's, it's an opportunity, which is right. nothing against that. Like, absolutely. Um, but for us, we saw what, like, having your life, your relationship very public continued after the show like what hardships that'll bring so we're mm -hmm. like let's get the hell out of this with each other go back to what we do so she went back to nursing like five days after filming after we got engaged wow. in thailand had a couple days to ourselves we flew back to the states she went back to the er she's a boss she's a badass <laughs> she's a fucking badass I, awesome. I love her to death and then i had to do some stuff for The Bachelor for several months, like per my agreement, you know, just tour around, which was a blast. 
Um, and then I, I just started um, at another company in July and I've been loving it. And we just live in like a, you know, a two bedroom apartment in Austin. We'll go out on the weekends every once in a while. But Austin's so fun. Oh, yeah. it's the best. It's so fun. It's the best. Yeah. So, so are just, there, are there, there are patients. Are there patients like rolling into the ER that are like, wait a second, you look familiar? Yeah, she's yeah. been spotted oh, at work. Oh, yeah. yeah. How All does the she time. handle that? Well, also, I think like nurses in general, they're a huge demographic of this show. So all of her coworkers freak out. All of her managers are like obsessed with it. So she's like, she's having a great time at work. Like people love having her around. Oh, I can she's imagine. a delight. She's to like around. untouchable. Yes. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, I want the beautiful nurse to <laughs> yeah. come to my room. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. So that's it, awesome. awesome. Good for her. Yeah. I'm glad you guys looked at it because I, I don't watch a ton of The Bachelor, but I have seen where the couples that are on there and then they just kind of transition it over to socials and live that like out in front of yeah. everybody that just can't be i'm, I'm sure it may work for some people but mm -hmm. I, I i'm glad i'm i respect that you guys were like hey let's try to let's try to do this a normal a normal way now i'm assuming people don't necessarily let you always just do it the normal way if you had in, weird instances of people showing up and well you have well, people driving by your house like yeah what's a weird f moment like yeah yeah because that seems like a show Paparazzi that might fanning. attract some yeah. some yeah. Some strange scenarios. Some yeah. sen okay. So I've had like a few, nothing that's just been absurd, but like, for example, when I said like my family's house, it was the day I, I had come back from the previous season of The Bachelorette. So before I was even The Bachelor, I decided to fly to Anaheim. I want to be with my family after what the craziness I just experienced before right. I go back to Austin. At that point, I'm still single. It didn't work out for me on The Bachelorette. And as I like landed and I got to my parents' house, which is in a small area, quiet area in Anaheim, there were like five or six cars, like a caravan in our cul-de-sac, all had their windows down with like photos waiting to get photos. And they so were just going weird. in loops. And my mom had to buy these like curtains to cover like a little uh, glass yeah. uh, window in the front. And I just wanted to get out of the house and go on a walk. And I had cars following me to the little trail <laughs> that we have near the house. And I was like, is this what life's gonna this be like? The Forever, and that was that was kind of scary. Yeah, and did, it felt like a weird dream I was living in because yeah. all of the filming is so unique too. So mm -hmm. it's like I just lived in a dream this whole time. Um, and then I get asked like unique things, uh, like because people have commented about my voice, and I get asked to read people bedtime stories. You have and, that yeah. soothing voice. Yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, That's yeah, you do. I could. I you know. There, I mean, I'm not saying like, but I'm not. Do you want me to read you a bedtime? Yeah, story? You know, <laughs> I, I might have a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to ask you because we were talking about this before. Yeah, yeah. Some people would be shocked to hear this. You used to play offensive lineman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I. No, you're either hiding an extra <laughs> couple hundred pounds somewhere, or there's a story there. So. How long did you play football? Yeah. How in the world did you play offensive line? Yeah, I well, it was like how I stumbled into football was was kind of random as well. So I was a baseball kid my whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, thought I was good. Uh, played since I was probably you know five six years old. Uh, tried out for the high school team, and on the first day of tryouts, I didn't make the team. They immediately cut me, and I was devastated. I was like, I, my identity was a baseball player. That's what my dad thought I was going to be. That's what I thought I was going to be. I mean, I didn't like passionately love it, but it was something that I thought I was good at. And my my family was like, "You still need to play sports in high school. You got to you got to make friends somehow." Right. Um, so I said, "I'll give football a shot." And uh, joined the football team. Sucked terrible. And I didn't know what <laughs> position to play because I didn't know about football. So my dad told me, "He's like, I've seen you on the baseball field. You're not that. You're not a wide receiver. You're not a quarterback. Just say you're going to be a lineman." So on the first day <laughs> of high school football, I was like, "Hey, coach. So my dad told me to tell you that I'm going to be an offensive lineman." And he's like, "By the way, you just said that. Yes, you are. <laughs> like you are meant to be an offensive lineman." So then I played in high school, and it didn't click till about senior year, actually, that I um, got bigger, got more athletic. Started getting the hang of it, and then I started getting attention from D1 colleges. Um, I started doing all my own recruiting myself. Started reaching out to like USC, UCLA, Cal. I had a lot of official visits that I got to travel across the so country. So you like wow. on your own? 
or All reaching out to schools. Didn't have anyone do it for me. No coach put a film together. No, no. I Because I was determined. My main goal was to make sure that my family never had to pay for my schooling. That was my thing, was I'll do everything in my power to get a scholarship. It doesn't matter what school I play for as long as they don't have to worry about right. paying the bills for right. that. And I, so I, after every game, I would make up a new highlight tape. I'd send it to minimum 300 coaches, assistant coaches, offensive line coaches, and just spamming, spamming, just getting it out there. And then a few gave me a shot, and one really stuck with me and gave me a scholarship, and it was Cal Poly out in Central California. Yeah. They're a D1 team, but they're a little bit smaller. And I played five years there, gained 70 pounds, and started for about three years there. And wow. best years of my life. Like, it was so fun. So what do you? What were you weighing at your heaviest? Technically, the, the heaviest I was 297. That's where? In... 297. <laughs> where did you put it all? Like, you're a, I'm you're a tall guy. How like tall are you? Back. I'm 6'4". Six, six, you're si- I'm 6'2". I'm a tall dude. I walked in there and you were towering over me. No, no. It, it, where did you... That's like losing a whole me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, not a whole me. I mean, like a whole person. Quite yeah. a bit, but... I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I'm a little... Yeah. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I'm a little fat. <laughs> but dude, wow. That's impressive. They, thank you. I, I lost 40 of it or... Yeah, about 40 or 50 of it in the first month. Uh, I went... What was too, the secret? Too drastic. I... So I took intermittent fasting to another level. Uh, it was, which I talked, uh, I've talked about a few times of like, I went too crazy on that where it's obviously not sustainable. Um, I I had that, you know, football offensive lineman mentality of like, if, if I'm going to get it done, I'm going to get it done quick. Right. Like, so just take that to the weight loss side. And oh, I mean, it was. If one practice isn't good, is good. Three should be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was probably eating six. 700 to 800 calories a day at, at 290. Yeah, and I was working out with my best friend and roommate at the time, um, Harry, and he would do the same thing. And when we were starving at lunch, like we're still going to school. We're well, you starving. had a buddy on this too, so you oh, had a buddy system. The com- you yeah. compete with each other too. Yeah, that makes it even worse. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know those Quaker bars, those granola bars. Oh yeah, yeah. Our lunch would be half of one. We'd split them. <laughs> If we were dying, it's like I had eight of those. Wow! This morning, breakfast. <laughs> I used to date a girl like it. She was like, "I'm full. I hate an M M&M and M earlier. I'm full." <laughs> I'm like, "What?" I, that's literally how we lived. And then it was like ground turkey and rice for dinner. And then we. So you just had hate for lunch because that's what <laughs> that's, I would have. I'd be like, "I hate this. I hate this so much." So, hey, and sadness. I was so tired of. We were running on empty. Yes, but I was so tired of what, of how heavy I was because I wasn't like that. Like I, I felt now like was this like bulk muscle or was this like some? But it was pudge. More, yeah, pudge. Yeah, like this was. big spare tire. You were a big lineman guy. Yeah, and it wasn't. I didn't feel natural. I was sweating all the time. I didn't feel good in my own skin. It affected so much part, like so many different aspects of my life. Like yeah. how I viewed myself, how I thought others viewed of me. I was. I felt gross in my own body. So that's all motivation for me to just go too crazy okay. and then cut a lot of it off. And then I kind of evened out as time went on and realized, okay, I can set healthy habits. I don't have to go so extreme. So 30 to 40 pounds in the first month. month That's insane. On. Like I, I yeah. That's like a pound a day. If you're oh, like a little over a pound a day. It was, it was. And we were tracking it. Um, and it, that wow. in itself, which is a problem, it is addictive. So I could see like, you know, like, like eating disorders are no joke. And that was something that like we had to be very uh, cautious about is like we like this can't go on forever. But we also recognize that we're taking this too extreme. Let's chill out. Right. Let's get some more calories into our diet. Let's take care of ourselves a little bit more. Because like it was just so we were so excited to stop eating buffet and McDonald's every day. Right, right, right. And then it just, yeah. So I got to ask this because you're – Maybe one of the most down to earth people I've, I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. You're just saying that. No, I'm, I'm dead serious. I told I told my wife. I'm just that. chopped liver over here. Don't worry. About <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just, you know. Uh, <laughs> but you know, both of us. I mean, we meet people who are mm-hmm. famous, and there's a level of expectation that, hey, they, they you know, sometimes they they don't and personalities but, or yeah, whatnot. Yeah, you're you a very humble dude, man. You don't take yourself okay. very seriously. Mm-hmm. I, I see that you know you're very comfortable in your own skin, and you were not at one point very comfortable in your own skin. So it's not just about the weight loss. What is it that has made you 
number one, humble. Number two, very comfortable being you. Uh, I mean, I think like taking care of my own mental health was huge for me. And it, it kind of ties into why like I work for my current company now. Um, but I, for a long time, tying in with the football weight and, you know, college dating, um, just growing up as an adult, like you really find yourself or try to find yourself. And I was running into a lot of, you know, self image issues. I had little to no confidence. I had body image issues. I had everything. And it was causing problems in every aspect of my life in past relationships with my actual girlfriends at the time or my family. And so I actually hit a point where I asked for help and I, I went to therapy and I went for just about a year or so and just kind of incorporated like, hey, let me address what's going on up in my noggin first and talk about it. Like it's not this big old problem if I can vocalize it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that was tough. But after several months, I was like, okay, like I'm starting to recognize like who I am as a person. I can be proud of who I am. I can, I can like the person I look at in the mirror every day. Um, and it just better prepared me. But like where I am today, it's like still a work in progress. Um, but night and day from what I was probably six months before I even got on the show in the first place. So the past two and a half years, three years have been totally transformational. What would, what would you say to guys? We're, you know, we're kind of close to in age and you're not much you know, younger than we are. What do you say to guys that think they're like therapy is still for whatever reason got this negative connotation with dudes and especially the world you know athletics world and yeah you know where he comes from in the comedy world it's not you know the the joke is always oh if you don't have mental health issues you can't be a good comedian they kind of right. use it as a joking thing and athletes are just as bad they mm -hmm. you know oh man just you know work it out or we, whatever so you now do something in your real life that has to do with that. But mm -hmm. if, if a guy came to you and said, Hey, I'm, I'm not, what would you say to some, to a younger guy that it, and to encourage them that, you know, sitting down at therapy is, is something that's healthy. Well, I mean, it's like, I, I talk about it daily at work. It's, you know, people see therapy as a sign of weakness. And mm -hmm. I think that's us as men, we're, we're kind of told to you suck know, it up and suck it up handle yeah. your battles yourself like yeah. you got this push like, that down go cut the grass you're gonna be fine don't be soft yeah, yeah, yeah. in football it was like don't be soft mm -hmm. like you just can't be Rub soft some like, dirt on it yeah yeah, yeah yeah and i think which is for the best i think as the maybe as the country or so we're slowly opening more and more to the idea of hey mm -hmm. i can talk about when i'm not feeling well mm -hmm. or like hey i know something's off I can talk to my buddy. I can talk to my family. I can talk to my girlfriend, my boyfriend about it. Doesn't matter. Um, I would just tell them, you know, it's not as scary as you think. Everyone is going through their own struggles. You probably mm -hmm. and most likely don't know that they are going through something. No one is judging you for it. Get help now. Get help as soon as you can. I won't judge you for it. You won't judge you. Like, no one will judge you for it. So, it's just taking that leap of faith. And so that's what we try to do with my job is we kind of take one-to-one -one therapy out of the mix and we actually have content that's already created to where someone can listen to actual clinically effective talks from therapists or PhDs at their own time, totally anonymous. For those that are a little bit nervous about sharing about their problems with a stranger, right? Because right. a therapist always starts off as a stranger. So that's what we're trying to do, and that's why I love it. That's awesome, man. That's good. It makes me feel like we, we probably should both go. Oh, I definitely. <laughs> yeah, 100%. We could bring one in. We actually have one in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and come on down. Uh, <laughs> what does Katie mean to you? Katie's my world. Katie, she... The love that there was no hesitation there. Oh, yeah. 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 That, you give me that look like, what do you think? Yeah. Like, I mean. There's no better way to answer that. <laughs> like, I, I didn't know what my life would look like at 27. Like, I think I'm, yeah, I'm relatively young and, and everyone has a different path to when, you know, they find their partner or if they get married or not or whatever. And, you know, I was optimistic through the whole process of going through reality TV to find a partner, but I was also real about how they're. This could, could be a chance that this doesn't work out like 
that's scary, but it's it's a risk. And when I'm with her and just thinking about like what we have, what our future could be, like I didn't think that was possible, especially at this age, but more likely ever to have that, like that confidence in us, you know, like she's she's not technically my wife yet, but I call her all the time like that's my wifey right there. Right, like yeah. my family loves her. I love her family. It just for some reason it all worked out and it's just kind of messed up. It came through reality TV, but you know, we went through different struggles that a lot of couples don't go through. Some would say, obviously they're different. Some would say they're tougher because it's like you're in the eyes of everyone and you have everyone's opinion. On mm -hmm. your relationship, oh, I bet, yeah. Uh, Everybody's quick. Well, that would be it. fun, yeah. wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> and then you turn you tune in to like any social media platform, Instagram, Twitter, or X, or oh, anything, yeah. and you have people grading you oh, as yeah. a person, grading um, your relationship, what you wore. Oh, how oh, you like said why? This. Why'd you say that? Uh -huh. Like and all this, and it's like you have a replay of your life every week, and everyone why would has not their, succeed in that environment, no. man. My, my ex-wife yeah. had a group of friends that would just run my name in the ground. I can't imagine uh. all of the Instagram. <laughs> like I'm talking about five girls that hated me. I can't believe how many million that are split right down the right. middle. Right. That's oh, got to be insane. God, I mean, is. I'm on social media, too, and I know the comments get crazy sometimes. Uh, but crazy. I I share my stories, and I'm like, I'm a comedian. You guys share your relationship. Yeah. You, do, yeah. you know what I mean? With the world, that right there is just... I, the, you'll. You, I think. I feel like you, you, you're always gonna make someone mad, no matter what you do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got her a dozen roses, somebody's gonna be like, "Why didn't you get her two dozen?" Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. And there's no perfect thing you can do in that space because it, that would be a boring show too. You mm -hmm. realize, like, out of my hands, like I, I wanted, and I got, you know, some criticism for it. And the show was like, you know, I'm, I think a regular guy. I want to make this ultra crazy environment scenario as normal as possible for me so I can survive with my head on straight. Right. Um, but that doesn't make for good TV. So like I I I don't care about good TV. Like I want my life after this. I want to hopefully find a fiance. So all of that came into play and it's uh it it still feels like a dream. Yeah. Does that feel like a weird just a weird yeah like section of your life that that you're not sure really actually happened. I don't think it did actually. Yeah, like I, I mean, I have my fiance at home, but that's about it. Like She's an I, amazing, beautiful woman. Yeah, at home, but other than yeah. That, How'd I, I get her? Know. I don't remember. No. All it's, right. Yeah. Last thing I want to ask you about because we were, we were, as we were getting ready to start this, uh, you're a comic book nerd. Oh, I'm a geek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time nerd. Um, it started with my uncle. Um, he was the tick. Back mm -hmm. in the day. Oh, yeah. I watched that show. Great yeah. show. I've been following your uncle. I'm a huge fan of your uncles, by the way. Really? Dude, yeah. I got to I would, I would to totally, fa if you introduce me to him, I'm going to fanboy. Okay. I will. Yeah. I'll, I'll set it up because he's the best guy ever. Oh, like, I, I die every time when I see him. He's the funniest guy I've met. Um, but I, you know, watching him on the tick, which should not have gotten canceled after it one was season. a great Agreed. show, a great show. They, and you couldn't have found a better person to play it. Like that, that role was ca that, that character was made. I know for him. I know. And mm -hmm. nothing against the newer tick. They made a few. Oh no, I liked it too. Yeah, it that was, was cool, good. That yeah. was good. But like, I just see, you know, uncle Pat, he's the tick. And then with Kronk, um, mm -hmm. Emperor's new groove, loved that. Um, and all the like, he was Buzz Lightyear in the cartoon version, and so just being in that world, I love it, you know. And every birthday, going to see the new Star Wars movie in theaters. I my oh yeah, fifth birthday party was Revenge of the Sith themed. Like I have, I, I have a Star Wars bar that I built true in story. my house. True story. Really? Yeah. Real. Yep. No. The bar itself has five inches of acrylic when you put your arms on it, and it's floated with toys and lights. And I went to. Um, old flea markets and broken homes and broken toys so I didn't get anything expensive yeah. and I put these broken pieces and I even took C-3PO and broke his arms and his legs off and stuck them all inside of the, the no inside way. of the bar and it floats. I'll show that's, you pictures of it when we're out that's here. That's awesome. It's a Star Wars bar. I've had seven people that star in Star Wars at that bar with me. That's taking pictures so there. Cool. It's, weird it's super cool, man. So I would fanboy I'm so hard seeing like anyone from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. I have the yeah. coolest lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, you just surprised me today, Zach. Yeah. Uh, just seemed like, you know, the, the sweetest, nicest, most down-to-earth guy. 
Well, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to have to watch The Bachelor now. I don't know about that. You don't, <laughs> you don't need to give it a watch. No, I just I your know. season, just your season. We'll just watch yours, and, yeah. and that'll be it. Okay. The weird thing is, oh, is I'll get, you know I'll how get it sucked ends. In. I'll get sucked. That's the part. <laughs> that I, I do know how it ends. I use that at work. Uh, I'll get sucked in. I'll be 12 seasons deep. It'll be. I, I get it totally. Uh, thanks for spending time with us today, bud. Thanks for having me, Thanks a lot. Yeah. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, awesome time, man. Thanks. Good thanks though. for checking out the Real Vibe Podcast with Aaron and Jacoby. Yeah.